I thought there was a very interesting thing that popped up on my social media timeline here on whatever it was, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning for my old buddy, Nick Coffey. Okay. So for people who don't know who Nick Coffey is, Nick Coffey, actually, if you're a long time listener to this show, he was basically my co-host when we started this show back in 2019. He's a great radio host in Louisville. Um, you know, he now hosts afternoon drive three to six, I think is his time slot does pre and post game for the Louisville Cardinals. And why I bring it up was because Nick put out a tweet about the Louisville coaching job. And so as a general rule, listen, you know how I operate. I don't love to talk about jobs and open or, or, or jobs and opportunities where the guy hasn't been fired yet. But when you look at Louisville, it is pretty obvious that Kenny Payne is not going to be there for the long term. He is not going to be the answer. Um, and I don't really see the scenario where he gets another uh, year at Louisville. I mean, I, I went on Nick's show last week and Nick basically acknowledged like there is basically zero scenario where he gets another opportunity. Louisville's currently six and 15 overall in year two under Kenny Payne, one and nine in the ACC. They're in last place. They're on a six game losing streak entering the weekend. And so is it maybe a little unfair to start talking about the Louisville head coaching job? Maybe, but I also don't really think it is. Kenny Payne is not going to be the head coach. And so I want to look ahead and I want to start with a tweet that Nick sent out on Wednesday afternoon. It said simply, should Chris Beard be the number one candidate for the Louisville head coaching job? Well, we'll get to that in a second. But what I will say is, first of all, if you're a Louisville fan, it's been a couple bad years. Okay, we all get that. I understand it, et cetera, et cetera. What I would also say, as we get set for this job to open, I think this job is going to attract a better quality of candidate than it did last time around. Last time around, if you remember, Chris Mack gets fired. It's a weird deal. Middle of the year, you start vetting candidates. Bruce Pearl gets an extension. Um, you know, Nate Oates isn't really available. And you start to realize there really aren't a lot of great candidates. This year, I think there are going to be a lot of great candidates. And on top of that, I think it's also worth noting, Louisville, of course, is done with their NCA sanctions. They, they had been under investigation. That was when Kenny Payne took the job. And so because of it, like we are probably in a scenario where Louisville not only opens, but I think the quality of candidate is better. Now, in terms of who are legitimate and candidates and who are not, let me start by saying this. What Nick tweeted out is what I believe. I believe that Chris Beer, if he's available and if he wants the job, is absolutely positively the guy that Louisville should get. But I also acknowledge there's probably, you know, there, there's some stuff going on there that would make him, you know, a little bit tough to hire. First of all, from the Chris Beard perspective, it, it starts with me for this, is that when I think about any head coaching job, what I think about is, is you could talk about age, this, that, the other thing. Who is the guy? I'm sure in, in female sports, women's basketball, softball, et cetera. Who is the guy or girl that you can hire that is going to strike the most fear in your rivals? Because to me, that should be the only question you ask. Because no, no candidate is perfect. No candidate is a thousand percent going to work. But if the guy that you can hire is the guy that your rivals will fear the most, chances are pretty good he is going to do everything that you hope for. So I put that out on Twitter on Wednesday. I said, you should Chris Beard should be the guy. Because Chris Beard ultimately is the guy that I think would scare the rest of the ACC the most and scare Kentucky the most. And I had a couple of Louisville fans say, no, no, no. It should be about who can take us on the deepest tournament runs, who can do this, who can do that. And it's like, well, that's kind of the same thing. If he's good enough to scare Kentucky fans, if he's good enough to scare Duke and Carolina fans, he's good enough to get you to Sweet 16s, Elite 8s, and Final Fours. And so to me, Chris Beard is the number one choice, and it's obvious. 18-3 and three right now at Ole Miss. Okay, Ole Miss is arguably... I know I just said Boston College is the toughest power conference job in football. In basketball, Ole Miss is in the short conversation. He has them 18-3. and three. They just beat rival Mississippi State at home. They won at Texas A&M. And that's the thing about Chris Beard. After a couple years of disappointment for Louisville, guess what? He is a guy that can come in, win, and win right away for the Louisville Cardinals. Keep in mind, everywhere that guy has gone, let's just talk about the D1 level. He has been insane and won in an insane clip, okay? 
Uh, go back to his first uh, Division One head coaching job. Goes to Little Rock. In year one, goes to the NCAA tournament, beats Purdue in the round uh, in the first round of the tournament. By the way, not gonna not gonna have any strays with Purdue today, but you know, listen, they got a little bit of a history. Okay, then he goes to Texas Tech. Year two at Texas Tech takes them to their first ever Elite Eight. Year three has them playing for a national championship. Oh, by the way, that national championship game went to overtime. They easily could have won. Like, I don't think people understand how 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 feasible it is that Texas Tech could have a national championship in men's basketball in the last five years, thanks to Chris Beard. Obviously goes to Texas from there. And I think it's easy to forget because of how the way things ended. You understand Chris Beard had Texas number one in the country last year? You understand that Chris Beard left a roster for Rodney Terry that made the Elite Eight and was leading an Elite Eight game comfortably at halftime before they completely fell apart? So Chris Beard, everywhere he goes, he wins, and he wins right away, and he is going to scare the you-know-what out of your biggest rivals. Now, obviously, the concern on the opposite side would be, frankly, is he hireable? First of all, the contract is a little confusing. Ole Miss is a public school. But they do this weird thing where they do all of their coaches' contracts through the school's foundation, so they're not technically state employees, so you can't actually get access to their contracts. Remember, Lane Kiffin a few years ago signed a big extension at at, at uh, Ole Miss as the head coach, and the state law prohibited anyone from signing, I think it was more than a four- or five-year contract. They do the contract through the foundation. He gets eight years and $80 million or whatever his contract was. Well, I've had people look into the Chris Beard contract, people I know, people I trust. They say it's not for public record. So there's a possibility that Chris Beard, you can't, he can't even get out of his contract this year, even if he wants to go to Louisville. Now, I figure there must be a way, but we don't know what the buyout is. The other thing, of course, is, is obviously how he left Texas. And you don't need me to reiterate or retell you how it happened, but it obviously, it was not pretty, right? Situation, he's arrested. Uh, he's charged with some pretty serious crimes. Now, obviously, those charges were eventually dropped, and we don't need to litigate what he did and did not do. We talked about it on the show at the time, and I really thought there was a chance he never coached major college basketball again. A year later, he's in the SEC at Ole Miss. And I will say, I know for a fact there, there, there's people in that Louisville community that just will not support the idea of Chris Beard being the next head coach at Louisville. Not saying it's everybody, but I know there are major media members that will very publicly fight against it. Uh, and it is worth noting, by the way, I Googled Chris Beard to get ready for this show. The first article was from a Louisville blog that basically said, do not hire Chris Beard Louisville. So that's candidate number one. And that's the guy that I would go after. Candidate number two is an interesting one, to say the least. Uh, it is, let's talk a little bit about Eric Musselman in Arkansas. Everybody knows Torres, you know, I've had Eric Musselman on the show a million times. Uh, I like Coach Muss. I have not talked to him about any other opportunities at any other schools, nor would I. Uh, that's just not really my lane. Uh, but there's a lot of smoke that he isn't going to be back at Arkansas next year. And it's not just behind the scenes, quiet smoke. Like literally their media in Arkansas is publicly talking about a day where Eric Musselman is not the head coach of the Arkansas Razorbacks. Not saying it's right, not saying it's wrong, but I went on my buddy John Neighbors' show last week and he publicly said, he said, if Arkansas, if, if Eric Musselman is not back at Arkansas next year, who would be a candidate for our job? So I'm not saying Muss is going to leave for Louisville, but there are a lot of whispers that he is interested in looking at other options. And listen, Louisville is a very good job. The ACC right now is not as tough as the SEC is. He could go there like Chris Beard and win right away. He would go in much less baggage. And the thing about Coach Muss, that guy wins at the same level as Chris Beard does. He comes in, he wins, and he wins quick. Just think about the last couple of years for Coach Muss. And I know things aren't going well at Arkansas right now. I get that. But 2018 at Nevada, at freaking Nevada, had them in the Sweet 16. 2019 at Nevada, had them in the top 10. For most of the year, they end up losing in the NCAA tournament. By the way, they got an at-large bid at Nevada. Two very successful, really three very successful seasons there. Goes to Arkansas. Year one is the COVID year. A lot of injuries. They still almost make the tournament, had there been a tournament. 2021 makes an Elite Eight. 2022 makes an Elite Eight. 2023 makes a Sweet 16. And it is worth noting, in two of those years, they lost to the eventual champion, Baylor in 21, UConn in 23. And so I just bring it up because it's like, 
we could be talking about Arkansas with multiple Final Four appearances. Maybe, you know, I don't want to go down the national championship road, but but like they lost to the best teams in the country in the years that they lost. And so I don't know if he wants to leave, but obviously if, if he is interested, I think it's somebody that Louisville has to go after. Now, I was talking to Nick Coffey. I went on his show. He did say that I think there's a lot of the fan base that is looking at the Arkansas record this year and starting to get concerned. So I don't know. I don't know if he's really interested in leaving, and I don't really know how interested Louisville fans should be. But in my opinion, if you have a chance to get Eric Musselman, you go ahead and get him. Last real big name that I do think is attainable, excuse me, is Jerome Tang at Kansas State. Jerome Tang, for people who don't know, obviously, look, longtime Baylor assistant, goes to Kansas State last year, and in year one, was awesome. Year one, they made the Elite Eight. They lost to Florida Atlantic. They win that game. They go to a Final Four in year one for Jerome Tang. Now, he's taking a little bit of a step back this year, but this is a guy that can win and win right away. Smart in the portal. Remember, two years ago, he brought in Keontae Johnson. This year, Arthur Kaluma, et cetera, et cetera. And the buzz in the college basketball world is that there really is a chance that he wants to leave, and that really is some friction in what he in what's going on there at um at Kansas State. My understanding, if you remember earlier this year, one of their starters off last year's Elite Eight team, uh, Naquan Tomlin, he got into a bar fight. The school suspends him, and then the school ends up not letting him come back. Matter of fact, he transferred to Memphis, is eligible right away, plays right away. And my understanding is Jerome Tang was not happy with that. And so I only bring it up because there is apparently friction between him and his administration. Um, and I've been told that, you know, the right opportunity comes up, he would be willing to leave. So he is a name that I would keep an eye on as well. A couple names that, you know, listen, I don't think Mick Cronin is really a candidate. Double check that buyout. Mick Cronin from UCLA, Big Mick Energy. Mick Cronin's buyout before March 31st of this year, 2024, is $20 million, even after March 1st. So you wait until April, which you probably don't want to if you're Louisville because you're probably going to fire Kenny Payne in mid-March right after the ACC tournament. Um, buyout then is $16 million. So it's just, it's a lot of money to spend in the portal NIL era. $16 million feels like a lot to spend for a head basketball coach just to get him to campus. Don't really think that Mick Cronin is really a candidate. And then from there, there's obviously a lot of second-tier candidates. Indiana State's head coach Josh Schertz is really good. There's some other smaller guys. But if you're Louisville, you got three candidates that are really good that I believe would take the job. And I'll just say this. I am curious to see it all unfold. Thought Nick did an interesting job setting it up. Because it is here, college basketball season felt like a good time.